The Evolution of Sea Anemones by Mitchell Sutton for The History of Biology 316. So the topic that I chose was sea anemone and how they evolve and adapt according to their environments, which relates directly to evolution, which we've discussed throughout this course. Um, so sea anemone, as well as other cnidarians, constantly evolve. When a sea anemone eats, it turns its food into additional limbs. Anemones are constantly evolving and adapting to their environment, having the ability to change their body size, reproduction strategy, as well as venom composition. The source that I used for this topic was uh, an article from the New York Times. Uh, I used many other sources as well, but this was the main one that I used, and it was titled, When these sea anemones eat, it goes straight to their arms. So briefly, I would like to just go into the history of evolution. We kind of talked about this a little bit throughout the course, um, well, a lot throughout the course. So I wanted to touch base on that just as a little bit of a refresher. Um, it was first considered and hypothesized in the early 19th century by Jean-Baptiste Lamarck. Um, and then later, of course, it was kind of brought even further to the scientific community by Charles Darwin, who improved and expanded upon the theory and um, published a lot of his findings in the book that we now know as On the Origin of Species, which was published in 1859. In this book, he introduced natural selection, um, as well as common descent and ancestry, and a lot of other topics that really introduced evolution as a topic to the scientific community and general public, which really hadn't been done so much yet in, at the time. In the early to mid 1900s, the, there was a focus on genetics, and this really came into the field of science, leading to discoveries of how animals have evolved and inherited certain traits and characteristics. By the end of the 20th century and beginning of the 21st century marked the introduction to topics of developmental evolution, macroevolution, and microevolution. So all of this directly relates to the topic that I chose, so that's why I wanted to give a brief introduction um, and refresher on that just so I could have that um, kind of a part of bringing back reeling everything into what we're going to be discussing for the sea anemones. So what are sea anemones? So you might remember in the movie from Finding Nemo, um, the, the clownfish actually live in sea anemones, so um, it's, as you can tell, a little bit difficult to pronounce, just like Nemo had trouble in the movie. But they're often mistaken for plants, which is understandable because of the flowery top that they tend to have, as well as the base um, can definitely resemble a stem. But they're actually animals, and their scientific name is Actinaria. They belong to the Cnidarian group, which is a group of invertebrates that also consists of different organisms like jellyfish and coral. They're usually found in tidal zones, but they can also live in depths of up to 10,000 meters deep. So they truly can live in just about any condition and any environment that they're placed in. There's over a thousand different types of sea anemones. Um, most of them, most of their species reproduce by releasing sperm and egg cells into the water for fertilization. But some actually are able to reproduce asexually through longitudinal fission. Uh, they actually sp split their body in half into two separate organisms, almost as if they're cloning themselves. So it's pretty incredible. It's, it starts with one organism, and then they're able to directly split their body in half um, to create a whole other organism completely separate from that one, which I find incredible. Their diet includes fish, small marine animals, as well as microorganisms, and then predators that eat them are usually sea slugs, starfish, eels, flounders, codfish, different fish like that, kind of just depending on the environment and what's available. So how did they evolve? So sea anemones have evolved to be able to convert the food that they eat directly into the growth of additional limbs or tentacles. 
So rather than storing this excess energy as fat or something like that, that a lot of other organisms tend to do, it's used to add limbs to the anemone, which in turn helps it actually grab and search for additional food. So the tentacles are just like an arm or leg as we would have. They can reach out and grab things and pull them into the mouth um, for it to feed. So this is the only species on earth that's known to have the ability to grow additional limbs directly from the amount of food that it's intaking. Genetically speaking, most animals and species, including humans, um, have some type of genetic code that allows them to grow the same number of limbs, shape, um, different things like that. So obviously humans, generally speaking, have two arms, two legs. Dogs have four legs, cats have four legs. Um, so that's typically how it is for most organisms. Um, but sea anemone do not develop genetically in this way and can actually have different amounts of tentacles depending on their food source as well as their environment. So just because one type of sea anemone has a specific amount of tentacles does not mean that even one in that same species would have the same amount. It really just depends on the amount of food that they have and the environment um, and things like that that affect them directly. In addition to this, sea anemone have the ability to evolve and adapt in just about any condition they're placed in. So differences in temperature, various predators, all things like that can cause the anemone to adapt and change their body size, reproductive strategy, as well as venom composition. So if there are certain predators, their venom composition could change to try to um, make it so that those predators don't eat them as much. Um, their color will change depending on how much light is in the water that they're in. So if they're in the deep depths, their color will definitely change due to that. Um, and this is something that doesn't just happen through generations. This can happen to one sea anemone in its lifetime. It can adapt that quickly. So many other animals and organisms throughout history that we've studied um, have taken years, sometimes thousands or millions of years to have abilities to be able to adapt to different conditions. Um, it takes generations and generations to pass along different adaptations as we've learned throughout the history of evolution. But for, for these organisms, it's happening right in front of us. We can actually study how they're able to do this, which is quite incredible to have that ability. So these are the sites that I use, the citations that I used and sources. Thank you for coming to my presentation and that's everything.